This is part one of our introduction to surveying. If you have not already done so, please print the note sheet that goes with this lecture and take notes as we go. What is surveying? Well, if I ask a room full of eighth graders like I typically do each year, they're going to tell me, oh, that's going door to door and asking questions. Well, that's what a lot of people in the public think of surveying as it's taking a survey. Most folks outside the engineering and surveying and other design professions don't know what surveying is. The agriculture community has a strong connection to surveying, as does engineering. But even then, there are plenty of misconceptions about surveying. Let's start with a foundational definition. Surveying is the art and the science of making field measurements on or near the surface of the earth. It's not only a science, it is an art. An art is really an extension of science that elevates beyond the purely objective to the subjective choices of the professional. Those subjective choices add value to mere fact. And the measurements we take on the surface of the earth, well those are easy to visualize. But near the surface of the earth can include things like GPS, positioning. We're measuring distances from near earth objects to positions on the surface of the earth. So our our measurements aren't always right on the ground. Surveyors can engage in a lot of different activities. This fellow is doing hydrographic mapping, mapping the underside of this body of water. On the back of his jet ski he has a GPS receiver and then mounted below that is a depth sounder. That may be a typical day at the office for him. You may be in remote locations uh, in some of the most beautiful places in the world and using some fairly high-end equipment. You may be involved with the dredging and mining industries. Those industries are heavily dependent on surveying. You're going to be working with professionals of all types, architects, engineers, surveyors, attorneys, developers, bankers. A lot of different folks depend on the work of surveyors. You may find yourself sometime at some point being an expert in a court of law because of your role as an engineer or potentially as a surveyor. Surveyors are dependent on rapidly emerging technology. Here you can see a total station instrument on a tripod, much like you have probably seen, and a data collector using wireless communication to help control that instrument. Surveyors are heavily involved in mapping, just, on, just as you see on this gentleman's screen. There is a type of mapping we call geographic information systems. Mapping is really at the core of what surveyors do. There are really three primary activities that surveyors are involved in, and one is research. And I'm not talking to the scientific research type, but research of previous surveys, the work of others that has come before us. Why? Well, what we do today very often needs to harmonize with the work of our predecessors. Then another primary phase of what surveyors do is field measurement. Those measurements could be surface measurements, they could be near surface measurements. We could combine several different methods in one project. And then the third primary activity of, of surveyors is mapping. That mapping may deal with 3D objects, as you see in this graphic, or it may simply be in the 2D realm. 
Surveyors have been around a long time. In fact, our history of surveying dates clear back to the Egyptian days, uh, prior to when these pyramids were erected. Surveying had a huge impact on the development of the United States. You don't recognize these gentlemen's faces, but you do recognize their names, Lewis and Clark. Lewis and Clark were not only explorers, but they used surveying skills to create very important maps that opened up the western United States for development. One of the key points in that development history was the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad. Well, prior to that railroad going in, surveyors were the ones blazing the trail, not just figuratively, but literally finding a way across the mountains and then guiding the construction. On the first lunar landing, astronauts placed on the lunar surface an array of reflectors very similar to what surveyors use every day now and from the Earth a light beam was aimed at those reflectors and returned to the Earth and using that technology they were able to measure the distance from Earth to the Moon to an accuracy of about plus or minus two and a half feet. Pretty remarkable considering that distance and we use that technology now every day. In 2003 when the Space Shuttle Columbia uh, broke up on re-entry in the Earth's atmosphere, it was surveyors who were uniquely equipped to collect all the data to make the forensic maps that enabled NASA and others to determine the cause of the crash. I like to refer to this national monument as a monument to three surveyors and one other guy. These three, where you see the dots appearing, are those three surveyors. George Washington was the first county surveyor of Culpeper County, Virginia, when he was a mere 16 years old. He was self-educated. Likewise, Thomas Jefferson was not only an architect and a land developer and a statesman, but he was also a surveyor of his large land holdings. Abraham Lincoln was a surveyor in central Illinois in the early 1830s as his political career was getting started. As we said before, we're highly dependent on uh, emerging technology, as you can see in the upper left. Sometimes our job takes us to some fairly remote locations, as you see on the upper right. Now I want you to notice here a, dis a similarity between the two images at the bottom left and the bottom right. In the bottom left you see uh, a surveyor with a fairly large instrument on a tripod that we call a 3D laser scanner or sometimes referred to as ground-based LIDAR. And it has taken a series of fairly densely located laser measurements to everything that it can bounce a laser off of and it has made a, a 3D point cloud in computer aided drafting software that you see here on the right. It's made a 3D point cloud of everything it can see. This is emerging technology that is taking firm root in the surveying profession and is going to have a significant impact on your career over the next several years. There are seven primary specialties in surveying that I'd like to speak about now. Construction, boundary, hydrographic, geodetic, forensic, photogrammetric surveys, and then a, a related field we call GIS or Geographic Information Systems. I want to go through each one of those just briefly and this is a good time to write these down on your on your note sheet. Construction surveys are 
very, very intricately tied to civil engineering projects. On the right, I think you can imagine we're not going to lay out a bridge of that complexity with a 25-foot carpenter's tape. It involves methods that uh, go well beyond what we see in residential construction. Likewise, uh, at, the, at the center left, in a refinery or factory situation, some tolerances are very, very tight, and only a surveyor is qualified to do that kind of work. Boundary survey involves uh, some research on where our predecessors set those original boundaries and sometimes those boundaries are indicated by markers that you see on the screen here. The one on the right is out in one of the western states. It's what we call a section corner. Or if you were down at uh, Walt Disney World in Florida, surveyors have set other markers to, to help locate the engineering projects that they undertake every time they build some new attraction. Hydrographic surveying is surveying things we can't see. That is, we're mapping the earth underlying any body of water. We're, whether that's a riverbed or a lake bed or the bottom of the ocean, hydrographic surveyors have a unique role a very essential role that affects not only natural resources but uh, maritime commerce. Geodesy is the study of the shape of the earth and there is much about the earth's shape that we are still learning. The earth's shape is changing for a variety of reasons and our understanding of the earth is constantly growing and geodesy is very dependent these days on technology such as global positioning system. Here you can see a technician on the site using global positioning system. This is a construction application but the same type of instrumentation is often used in geodesy. We're dependent on our constellation of not only American, but Russian and Chinese and European satellites to help us determine positions precisely on the Earth's surface. Photogrammetry is a discipline within surveying. The work that you see in photogrammetry and the photos you see on Google Earth, Google Maps, that is the work of surveyors, a sp specific subset of surveyors called photogrammetrists. Geographic information systems, or GIS, are expanding rapidly not only in, in law enforcement and uh, fire service, but also in natural resources, in agriculture, and in engineering. Municipal groups, cities, counties, and states are all using geographic information systems to, to manage their assets. More and more engineers and surveyors are dependent on geographic information systems and they allow us to combine lots of images, database information, maps, and statistics to help us make good choices in our various disciplines. Forensic surveying is taking hold in police departments all across the country. Here you can see police department personnel mapping key data points at either a crash scene or at a crime scene so that they can reconstruct what happened prior to their arrival. So with forensic surveying and software they can cre recreate the events that they did not see. Just as engineers can become professional engineers and architects can become registered architects, 
surveyors can become professional land surveyors, that is, licensed in their state of practice. Not every surveyor has to be a professional land surveyor. Many surveyors are surveying technicians, and they can pursue an optional certification with the National Society of Professional Surveyors. Many survey technicians have um, a two-year degree or less. For every professional land surveyor, we effectively need four to six technicians. Just as for every engineer, there are a handful of engineering technicians that they work with. So, to become licensed, there are four primary steps. Education, which in Illinois requires a four-year degree and a certain number of credit hours in surveying, followed by a fundamentals exam. This sounds an awful lot like what you have heard about. You can take the engineer in training or the fundamentals of engineering exam as soon as you or very close to your graduation time. Likewise, we do the same thing for surveying. Then you need four years of experience working under a licensed professional. Once you have that four years of experience, then you can take the professional level exam. So, just like engineers and architects have a process like this, so do surveyors. Engineers, architects, and surveyors are the three licensed design professions in the state of Illinois. And their examinations are administered by the National Council of en Examiners for Engineering and Surveying. You can dig into those requirements, whether it's for surveyor and training or engineer and training exams, at the website that you see there. So at this point, I'd like you to take a break and switch to the CIT 255 Introduction Part 2.